Today, we play as the Soviet Union in a World War Germany, won World War II, and then got annexed by the Allies, but yeah, that was um, eh, kind of embarrassing on their part. We've reformed the Soviet Union, though, from a small cluster of countries to its furthest extent ever. We have Kaliningrad, Poland's our puppet state, everything is good in the world, except... Except to one thing, a man, a legendary figure you could say, in the Socialist Republic of Yugoslavia, Tito, is fighting a war right now against the Allies, against everybody. We might have to save this man, this comrade, in his struggle against all of the West, against all of capitalism. We currently lead the Sosin turn. It's pretty much just us, our puppet states, the NKVD, and Mongolia. In the previous episode, we gave the NKVD their own island here in Yuzni, kind of to distract them from doing bad things in our country. Now they have their own state to control. I've, I've never seen this happen before. We also have have friends in Greece who could maybe help us help Tito. China, however, hates communism after losing a war to Vietnam. China will be an enemy, for sure. And I should clarify too, this is a defensive war. It's a war that Italy started against Tito. So he has every right to fight this war to its full conclusion. They started this, and we will end it. We'll put an end to their aggression here and their aggression in Germany. And the alliance between us and Yugoslavia is now official. Of course, Tito may not be our greatest friend. I don't know, he, he's a pretty cool guy, but he has a lot of motives not to like us in the Soviet Union as much. He probably dreams more of an independent land for Yugoslavia, not something akin to our other satellite states, but he's already in a conflict with the West. He's already been forced onto our side. And now we'll have to invade the Republic of Bulgaria, a land dominated by fascists, yet ruled by social democrats who have sided with the capitalists over us, the socialists. But soon we'll overthrow all this and uh, replace it with a new array of parties, much better than what they currently enjoy. Anyways, we'll call our puppet Romania in, and then we'll move it to Bulgaria. They only have three divisions so they do not stand a much of a chance. Guess if they didn't want to lose, they should have had a bigger army. Oh, Moscow was destroyed once by the Germans, and now it's destroyed again by the Americans. Uh, I probably should have had more planes over here. Yeah, we should probably start our own nuclear research, honestly. Yeah, it's about time. It'll take a year, but... And great, we're getting naval invaded. Uh, at least I have all these divisions here that I can just start deploying. Yeah, hmm. this is how you stop naval invasions. <laughs> Uh. And we were kind of able to cut the Allies off in Poland. They have no ports, but they have military access through Germany, so they still have supply. Which is really annoying. Unless we invade Germany, Germany is violating their neutrality in this situation, honestly, letting the Allies move supply through them. Also, Yugoslavia got invaded in Albania, which we took for them, and the Italian front is not, not going perfectly. But I guess if we just don't be aggressive, we'll probably be fine here. Yeah, now the Allies are trying to evacuate from Poland since we invaded Germany. It might be successful, though, if we're not able to act fast enough. Our divisions are very bad compared to them. This has become the classic quantity versus quality war, where we have a lot of divisions and they have actually good divisions. Oh, wait! What, what is this twist of fate? On a visit to Germania, formerly known as Berlin, a collapse of part of the badly damaged Volkshall crushed and killed several people during an inspection of the building, including Marshal Zukov himself. What? So the leader of the most powerful country in the world decides to go inspect some random destroyed building that's not in the best shape, and then the roof falls down on him. Like, what? That's, that's it? This isn't suspicious at all. Um, guess we have to get a new field marshal too. He was such a good field marshal. I guess it is just the way things work after all. Uh, well, we'll still fight on and uh, still fight the good fight. We'll remember Zuka for uniting Russia. And now we will unite the world. And out of our new leaders, we could have had the communist who loves the bureaucracy, an alcoholic, this guy who's just trying to cover up a lot of stuff. But we chose, of course, the, the good guy, as always. We always here are always the good guys in every way possible. And today we play as the good guy who passes the Soviet Disability Equality Act and reforms the healthcare system, gives every town a doctor. It's a good future for the Soviet Union, a very wholesome future as we fight this never-ending war against the Toronto Accord. Yeah, and Germany has capitulated once again. Uh, they've 
they've capitulated twice now since winning World War II. Oh well. Now they belong to us, and we will create a new Germany. Yes, let's give Pomerania to Poland, yeah sure. The Soviet military administration led by Batov. Nice. And even though the Kingdom of the Netherlands and the Kingdom of Belgium have decent armies, Belgium a decent army, the Netherlands a pretty big army. I don't know where they are, they're definitely not defending their mainland, so... Mm. Oh well. And Italy it took a swift turn towards socialism. The second we were halfway through invading their country, coincidence, I think not. This is a classic move from Italy. They're probably going to be changing sides within seconds, I would guess. Also, the Netherlands were overrun, but the Allies are having a last defense here in Belgium. It looks like they will most likely fail. There's really not much that they can do here at this given moment. We're also going to make the great Red Navy. Uh, we're making, I think, one, two, three, four, five, six, like seven heavy ships. They'll be done in two years, ready to, for service on the seas. And this will change the seas forever. No more will America and the UK dominate the waves. Soon the Soviets, we, we will have a chance at great victories. Unimaginable before this point. It'll only take two years, but then, how oh then? Oh yeah, and I forgot, the Spanish state, which happens to be fascist, joined the Sosin turn, which doesn't really make that much sense. I don't know why they did this, but yeah, it's time for them to leave, yeah. <laughs> oh, and it's apparently time to end the military occupation of Germany. That's nice. There we are. Now they're the German People's Republic. Perfect. By Ivanov. And the borders of the Czechoslovak Republic are too cursed to be allowed to continue to exist. This is just absolutely terrible. Slovakia is just one state. I don't know how that happened. Also, we have very Chad Yugoslavia, which is just Yugoslavia and Italy. The best form of Yugoslavia. And uh, the British have retaken the Netherlands, and I already moved my army away from Europe, so I couldn't really do anything. But I'm moving my tanks back, so we'll hopefully be able to take that back. And uh, that was kind of an oversight, but it's, it's just... Exciting, more fun. We also reunited Czechoslovakia just because it was really weird as it stood there. And their invasion into Italy is pretty good. They're starting to attrition now, so we may be able to turn things around. But right now it's really good for them. But instead of dealing with Europe, I think we should just invade China. This is a great idea, obviously. China cannot exist in the current blue state that it exists in. It's just unnatural. We have to fix that here. And we can't even really deal with the Allies until our navy is done, so it doesn't really matter. I guess we should probably defend our stuff, but I, I, I don't know. Okay, Tito has proven to not be as genius as I originally thought. Um, it was not a good idea to move all my armies over to Asia on second thought. Uh, we're going to remove at least one of them, bring it back home. Yeah, this one, yeah, it's it's coming back. Uh. So I may have messed up with some of my calculations in Europe. The new guy, Piotr here, he um he may have uh, neglected Europe a little too much. We, we've fallen back now to our borders. We're kind of giving up on our allies and puppet states for the time being. We're gonna try to hold Denmark and Poland, this line here. Uh, our main goal now is to just finish up China as soon as possible. We're low on supplies, but once we capitulate China, we'll get all their supplies, and then we can move all of our armies back to Europe. Yeah, deal with one front at a time. I guess this was a really bad idea, starting this two-front war. Who would have guessed? Ah, here we go. China has capitulated. This is good, yeah. Well, it wouldn't automatically let me release China, but apparently the TNO release nations mod works for this mod too. <laughs> the more you know. Yeah, it is kind of weird that China's blue again and that the guy who used to lead the country is in charge again and he's definitely not a communist, but I don't know. I'm just not gonna complain. <laughs> and the armies have returned from China to find pretty much nothing on the front lines everywhere. I think this is gonna end pretty bad for the allies. They pushed us back to our borders, but now it's time for round three, I guess. Yeah.
And our navy is pretty much done here. I guess we should give these ships some cool names. Nice, now we have the most, I don't know, depressing navy ever. I like it though. Yeah, now we'll have a pretty strong navy. I I'm sure I'm sure this will um, defeat the British Navy easily. Also, I feel like anti-tank must be a little messed up in this mod. We're down 12.2 thousand. I think that means that almost every division, if not every division, doesn't have anti-tank and we're producing 154 per day. And the NKVD demands more land. After recent gains in mainland Europe, Suslov, leader of the NKVD, has demanded more territory. He claims the NKVD has been a vital instrument in the success of communism, and the organization needs more territory as the Soviet Union expands. And I guarantee, Mr. Pokrashev, it's in your best interest to give us this gift, and if you fail to act, I will remember. Hmm, interesting. Um, I feel like this could end up going in a, um, a pretty bad direction here. <laughs> But unfortunately, that's all the time I have left for today. So I'll have to see you next time as we fight the allies together and finally, finally achieve victory.